as I was saying, so we have the I, my screen cut off there, and so we'll keep on going, but we have the privilege of bringing our prayers and our petitions to the very throne room of grace. We Those cares that others share with us that we can be so deeply moved by, we can bring to the Lord. And so when we come, we ought to have a spirit of meekness. We ought to have a spirit of humility. And we have a desire to be able to help them, help those that are going through difficulties. A spirit of gentleness among us. Uh, a constant self of, uh, a sense of self-examination, lest we also be tempted. A willingness to, to hear and to share and then to bring those prayers to the Lord and, uh, and be willing to share with others. And you, we just never know how God is going to use us because, you know, uh, I can think of times where I just I'm thankful that the Lord had placed, has placed me where he has placed me and uh, placed the people around me whom he has brought into my life. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, who comforteth us in all, we, we serve the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any way troubled by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. You know, we go through trials and difficulties, and you just never know how God is going to use those to impact somebody else and, and help someone else in their time of difficulty. And so we think about all these things. And we think about uh, the, the need to have a, a heartbeat for those that are around us. That the church is to be growing together and knit together in love. Not divided. And so then we come back. We have to also have a desire to know what God's word says. If we, it says, um, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, so then there is the there is the there is the teaching here that we need to know what the truth says in order for us to be able to show them the light of truth, show them the truth of the word of God, show them the way in which they can come back to the the light and and. Uh, uh, get things right with the Lord, back to the word. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to not only know what the truth says, but we need to rightly divide the word of truth. And then it says in verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. What does that speak of? Instructing those that oppose themselves, those that turn aside, those that have turned from truth and have been turned on to error. That God peradventure will give them repentance, the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover them out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And when we realize that there is a brother and a sister who are going through times of where they've turned from the truth of the word of God, we realize there's a spiritual battle at, at work. Because the devil certainly desires to be involved in the life of the Christian and we ought not to have any time for the devil. The only time we need to have for the devil is coming before the Lord and asking the Lord that he would flee from us. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It says, who may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. He is one who snares. He is one who deceives. And he's trying to hurt the church. He's trying to hurt the flock of God. He's trying to hurt those that Christ uh, is desiring to work through. He's desiring to cause the Holy Spirit of God to be grieved in the church. And he has many fronts and wars in which he's trying to fight that battle. 
We need to pray for our young people. I cannot imagine what it would be like growing up as a child and a teenager in the world we live today. I thought things were difficult when I was a teenager. I don't think there's any comparison of what teenagers are facing today. The devil is certainly seems to be doing all kinds of wicked work in the world today. He's using our young people and he's wanting to lead them astray. We need to pray for our young people. We need to pray for our church, our church family. We need to realize that God places us in the lives of each other for a reason. And it says, and if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And then it tells us, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, are you going to be that one tonight? Maybe there's somebody in your life that the Lord has is, is brought in your life for a reason, and you can shine a light, desire to be an encouragement to them, make a difference, have compassion. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. James is a book that gives us a lot of warning as Christians. It's a letter that reminds us that we still live in an old sinful nature, an old sinful body with an old sinful nature. We can easily deceive ourselves. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Oh, that tongue, that, that world of iniquity that's inside of us. It's a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a little matter a little fire kindleth. Chapter 3 and verse 5 says. What about that wisdom that is from above? It's pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated full of mercy with it and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. What's our life? It's just but a vapor. Even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. He goes on. How many blessed verses we've come across in the book of James. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Faith. Faith without works is dead. So faith without works is dead. We have a faith that works. And I believe there are many practical lessons from the book of James that can help us put our faith into action. And I trust the Lord will bless you, encourage you, and help you as we seek to live for him and give him the glory. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. We pray that you'd bless this study. We pray that you would encourage each heart. We thank you for this time spending in the book of James. Lord, we thank you for the teaching to our souls. Father, we pray that we would draw closer to thee. Help us to be looking, be watching, be ready to be used of you to help another. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Trust the Lord will bless you. And I'm so thankful that uh, you've taken time to have a little study together. And we'll see you, Lord willing on the Lord's Day. Take care, each one.